Hey guys, how's it going? Rubik's Master here, and uh, I'm sorry I missed my video yesterday. The game I was trying to play would not download on my tablet because it is a massive game, but I'll bring that to y'all tomorrow. But today, we are going to talk about something that a couple people have mentioned, which is the actual usefulness of the heavy turret and the heavy platform. So, uh, I mean, yeah, let's just jump right into this. Honestly, um, when you reach upper levels and the units that are available at that level, <clears throat> especially the high Mars, the heavy turret becomes even harder to use than it is now. As it is, your heavy turret has the same range as your rail guns. And what that means is it can be outranged by the um, M270s and the GMLRSs. So what you need to do to make sure your heavy turret is not completely useless is make sure it is in the center of your base. Everything else needs to be built around your heavy turret. If your heavy turret is an outlier, like I've attacked a lot of bases where they have a heavy turret, and it'll be like, the heavy turret itself will be in the nook where this howitzer and the transformer are. Or, uh, you know, they'll have the tunnel system set up where the walls are pretty close together in a long line and the heavy turret will be on one end. That doesn't work. Uh, if anyone attacks with M270s or GMLRSs, which is what most people do nowadays, they'll be able to wipe out your heavy turret first thing without even sweating it. It's just an easy kill and doesn't make any difference. You gotta make people work to take out your heavy turret. Uh, something else, the heavy turret, um, really when you think of your heavy turret's philosophy, it fulfills really one, well, two purposes. One is the really obvious one. It decimates vehicles, and you like it. It just decimates units of any kind. It fires once every second and a half, and pretty much is a two-shot kill to tanks. Like my level ten Abrams, it's a two-shot kill as a level one heavy turret. So pretty brutal. So you definitely want to be taking this turret out really, really quickly. Um, if you are trying to blitz a base, and you get in range of this heavy turret, it has way too much health for you to take, for you to take out, or to be taken out by your enemies attacking you. So again, that goes into your base design. When you integrate your heavy turret into your base, you want to have it where, if anyone is attacking your heavy turret, they're also getting attacked by other things, because. Um, Let's take my base, for example. You have a howitzer, a peacemaker mortar, and a bunch of machine gun turrets. That's all my damage from other things. My machine gun turrets, you know, they're kind of whatever. They're kind of hanging out there on this one side. My peacemaker is here, um, kind of going in tandem with that machine gun turret. So that's a pretty handy thing there. And then my howitzer, of course, is over here. So, here's the deal that I try and work out. If someone's attacking my base from over here and wipes out my machine gun turrets, they are then going to have to take out my heavy turret before they can really gain access to the peacemaker or the howitzer. In the meantime that they're trying to take the heavy turret out, that gives my peacemaker and my howitzer plenty of time to blast away at them. If the enemies decide to attack from down this away, still, the, the howitzer is going to be the main one that people are going to have a hard time getting rid of first off, unless they spawn up here with M270s and take care of it. But if enemies attack from this direction, they're still going to have the, the howitzer to deal with, and they're also going to have the peacemaker and the machine gun turret off of this end. The other machine gun turrets, I've thought about moving them a little bit closer in, so that they can give a little bit better coverage, because I do have a little bit of a weak spot around right here. But the basic concept is you want lots and lots of overlap on your heavy turret, because your heavy turret is basically a massive barricade between the two sides of my base. If an enemy gets within range of my heavy turret, unless they're dealing some major damage, they're not going to be able to take it out before it just puts a huge dent in their forces. It's not going to happen. <clears throat> now, kind of an unforeseen 
thing with this heavy turret because we didn't really get a whole lot of details before it came out. But um, it can target air units to include air support. So I, my base still gets wrecked by high levels using raptors. However, those raptors almost always die because of my heavy turret. So at the very least, this heavy turret is a deterrent against people attacking you and using the aforementioned raptors because when those raptors get destroyed, mm, just super, super expensive repairs. So uh, really, that's the gist of it. That's the gist of my base defense, my philosophy behind the heavy turret. It's got to be at the center of your base, um, especially with the level I am and the levels I'm going into. Pe people are going to be using GMLRSs. They're already using M270s. So you have to make them work for it. I don't even use rail guns anymore. They really hold no benefit. They're too easy of a target. Uh, you can't, they'd have to be paired with a machine gun turret to be really useful. And um, there's no really good way to position a machine gun turret rail gun combo in a base. So right now, I think rail guns are basically just useless. So the shortest range turret I have in my base right now is the heavy cannon. <laughs> Now, there is a little caveat to the heavy cannon, which is that it does have a minimum range, which, I mean, as you see, it's pretty tiny, especially compared to the typical minimum ranges of turrets. But if you have little dashing units, you can get in there. And, I mean, good luck. You can try it. But if you're a rush tactic kind of person, that's going to be your only bet. But... I'm still betting it's going to end up really, really badly for you. But yeah, put your heavy turret in the middle of your base. Try and put your turrets on each side of your base. Have your base split into halves and have each half of the base cover the opposite side of the heavy cannon. And that will give you kind of the optimal defense. At least that's as far as I've seen. But uh, let's look at a couple defenses I've done recently. I believe I have actually lost an attack just recently. Yep, CMLK. Let's see, he defeated me in the war zone. I'm not too worried about war zone attacks because with, um, with the fobs, the reinforcement fobs, it can be a little bit hard to really predict how people are going to attack. Uh, they can have a full force attack you from one side of the base, while also attacking you from the other side, makes it really, really difficult to really create a practical defense. But let's look and see what this level 64 guy did to beat me, and let's hope I at least cost him a lot of oil and repairs. It's weird, the only losses I've had recently in PvP have been high, high level people. There we go, GMLRSs and M270s. I'm guessing he's only using Abrams and M270s because he hasn't built up enough resources. There you go. So he brought his Raptors in and took out my heavy turret and my airfield, but not he, he lost all his air support. That's an expensive repair. So right, right there from the get-go, I cost him a lot. A very, very, very lot. And he's also losing a good bit of his DPS. It always cracks me up a little bit how people seem to like buy their way to high levels and then they don't have good strategies developed to actually do good attacks. This guy's beating me. How did he beat me at this at this rate? Well, three level 6 Merkavas, those level 6 Merkavas can really take a beating, especially since all I have blasting them is howitzer and two machine gun turrets. So yeah, he's gonna beat me, but only, only just. <laughs> he probably could have pulled out a more thorough victory if he, um, if he would have been a little more careful when he placed his units initially and didn't lose a lot of his DPS. All right, so let's pull up another one. Let's see if there's a one that looks good that I can, um, level 61, CMLK, is that the same, huh, 
being targeted by the same dude. Might have to do something about that. that that's Let's Kill. Hmm. Weird. Anyway, let's carry on. So this dude failed to defeat my headquarters in PvP battle. Let's see what he did, because he's a level 61. Well, let's see what he did that didn't work. So right off the bat, let's pause and take a peek at this. This is an issue, especially with the newly introduced Peacemaker Mortar. Maws used to be the meta. Like, before the heavy vehicle update, all the high levels, or mid-levels, mid-high levels, whatever, whatever level I am right now, um, were using Maws to basically one-shot turrets as they work their way through a base. But with the introduction of the Peacemaker Mortar, infantry troops have become a lot harder to use because they sustain damage very, very, very quickly. So I'm betting what's going to happen. This dude is dealing a ton of damage. Like, this dude's DPS is through the roof. But he doesn't have a whole lot of tank. But what I'm betting is going to happen is he's either going to spawn up here and he's going to lose his tanks pretty early on or he's going to spawn down here and his infantry are going to immediately get wrecked by my Peacemaker. So let's see what happens. Where is it? Okay, so he brought in... Oh, he has a bunch of raptors. And he lost almost all of them. Oh, yep, there it goes. He spawned in the bottom, got immediately demolished by my Peacemaker Mortar. Destroyed every last bit of his DPS in two shots. Or was that three? Really, it's a moot point. Two or three shots, it obliterated 100% of his DPS. Just because he was bad at placing his troops as a level 61. That's awful. Mm. I really don't want to blame them for it. Like, if you get to level 61 and you don't know how to attack, that's a little bit sad. But you'd think the game would be spaced out a little bit, so as you grew in level, it would be slow enough that you would learn how to attack. So a level 43 attacked me and failed. Um, we're not going to watch that. Has defeated my head. Level 67. Hmm. Come on, I want a, I want a good fight. Uh, defeated my headquarters in PvP. Level 60. Level 58, that's probably about as even as we're going to get. So let's see what he did. As a level 58 to defeat me. I think I'm level 53 now, right? Yeah, oh good, it does the level comparison. I was only level 52 at this point. I've upgraded my defenses substantially since this attack. So yeah, this dude is bringing in the Maws. He messed up initially, had his Maws too far in front, took a hit. So he lost a good bit of his air support. That's a lot of oil right off the bat that killed him. Huh. <clears throat> he backs off a little bit, letting my units come to him, using his Zeus's as a buffer. I need to update the vehicles that come from my War Factory. Uh, base level Humvees really aren't that good of a thing to bring in. Um, I don't really remember exactly what I have coming out next. I think Abrams? No, I don't think I have Abrams in my War Factory. Yep, Humvee IFVs. I definitely need to update my, my defending units. Haven't really touched them in quite some time. I can probably get rid of snipers altogether from my uh, barracks. But yeah, you can see as from from this attack to a more recent one, I've upgraded all of my machine gun turrets to max level. Um, I upgraded my walls and the two defense platforms that the air support is on, or the anti-air is on. Alright, so yeah, you can see the Maw's strategy does work pretty well. He um, is dealing a lot of DPS. So yeah, he did a good distraction with the the uh, Merkavas, but he kind of wandered in range of my machine gun turrets. Mmm. <laughs> That howitzer is a tricky one to get rid of. Honestly, at this point, my landmines make it a little bit difficult, but I probably, with his platoon, I would have walked around the outside 
and come through the gap in my landmines right here, broken out one wall to make sure my units followed a straight line, and then come through the base so I didn't have to try and work my way around that nook. He did beat me in the long run, but it cost him dearly. So he has his Maw's troops in front of his tanks, which didn't hurt him, but it could have. You always want to make sure, um, even though the Merkavas have long range compared to other units that might be paired with your Merkavas, you'll want to make sure to manually control your Merkavas so they go in front of your units. Especially with Maws, you don't want to lose that DPS. <laughs> if you lose your Maws, all hope are is lost. Mm, nothing like bad grammar to mess up a little quote there. But anyway, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope this shows you how to place your heavy turret a little bit better. As I said, really what I find my heavy turret used most for is anti-air and costing people a lot of oil and repairs for their raptors. Because that's really the only thing it's done. If someone's going to lose my base, to lose against my base, they um, will probably lose before they get to the heavy turret. And if they win, they probably take out the heavy turret with their air support. That's typically how it goes. But to get the most psychological warfare out of your heavy turret, do what I told you. Middle of the base, turrets on either side, and turrets on the bottom. You know, overlap and defend the top. Turrets on the top, overlap and defend the bottom. But I hope this answers y'all's all, questions. If you have any dope strategies that you use to set up your base defense with your heavy turret, please let us know. And until next time, y'all have an awesome day.